second order of business. Address the budget. We also recognize what we should be doing with our economy is not to try and infuse more government into the economy. If you want to see the economy in Iowa turn around and get back on track and recover, the solution is less government. And government respects the fact that within our system, you have to allow business to be the engine that drives economic growth and job creation. It's not about the government. And two years ago, when the federal government passed the stimulus package, and Iowa received $1 billion in federal stimulus money, after it was announced how much we were going to receive over a two-year period, Governor Culver then said, we should do our own state stimulus plan. And I'm going, why would you lay over <coughs> top of that money what became the iJobs program? Borrowed money here in Iowa that we now know $870 million borrowed and bonded for with interest over 20 years the taxpayers of Iowa are on the hook for $1.66 billion made no sense then and since this program has been implemented guess what our unemployment rate has been doing going up 117,000 Iowans out of work this will not work it was a flawed and failed plan from the get-go this is what we need to do. You step back and respect that it's the place of the private sector to drive and grow the economy, not government. We defend our right to work law because I am convinced that only states that are right to work states will see their economies grow in the future. That's not being against people who want to uh, join uh, a labor union. That's fine. But in Iowa, we have one of the <laughs> oldest uh, uh, right to work laws in the country. We must remain a right to work state. And then you cut, you cut taxes for business. I'm the first Republican candidate to propose eliminating the corporate income tax. If you want to see business thrive, you provide the powerful stimulus of cutting taxes. And you do that, and business can keep its own capital, they will reinvest it, and they then will have the means of expanding facilities, creating new product lines, purchasing new equipment. And I've asked business leaders across the state, if we eliminated that tax, would it make a difference in your company? They said, yes, it would. Ultimately, allowing us to hire back people we've laid off and help us create new jobs. That's what we need to be doing. And then it's about lightening the regulatory burden placed on business. We have a problem here in Iowa. I hear from business people all over who say, why is it in government? And in particular, within some state departments here in Iowa, people view their role as dropping bags of hammers on us. Don't you get it? We're the ones who help drive the economy, create jobs. But you're working against us all the time. That's got to stop. And as governor, I will work to create a new culture in the executive branch of government. And those people I appoint to positions of leadership will think like I do. We're here to serve people and to help. We are not here to hinder and we're not here to punish people. We need a different attitude in those who serve in leadership because as the leaders think, as they go, so will the employees who work in those departments and agencies. we got to think differently. It's about getting our financial house in order. It's about the right approach to an economy, less government, not more government, respecting those things that we know work here in America. Then another thing that I believe is very important. I have never seen more people awaken to what's going on in government, the direction our state and our country are heading in and are not happy about it than what I find today. I'm 52 years old. There are more people aware and engaged than I've ever seen in my lifetime. And people are going to turn things around in 2010. But I also believe that the voters are looking for individuals who will think differently about leadership itself. Because they're not just going to change out people for the same kind of people the next time around. That's not what they're wanting to do. They are looking for individuals who understand that remember, government 
as in the words eloquently spoken by our first Republican president many years ago at Gettysburg, our government is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. It's about the people and respect for the people. And whether it's, and whether it's an attitude that says, you know what? When the federal government oversteps its bounds and tries to take over one-sixth of our economy by nationalizing not only the health insurance industry but health care itself, that is wrong from a constitutional perspective, but it's also wrong because of what it will do to the taxpayers of this country. I was the lead sponsor of an amendment offered on our health care reform bill in the Iowa House just before we adjourned this spring that would challenge the federal government. I offered the amendment, all my caucus colleagues signed on with me. And that amendment had two actions in it. Number one, it asserted the authority or sovereignty of the state of Iowa under the 10th Amendment to determine our own health insurance policies here in Iowa. Action number two, it stated very clearly that no citizen of the state of Iowa could be compelled to purchase a health insurance product as mandated by the federal government. All of my colleagues supported me, we voted for it. The other folks voted against it. Had the amendment been adopted and that bill passed and signed into law, it would have put our law in direct conflict with the federal law, setting up a legal challenge. And we should challenge the federal government when it steps over the bounds, because the people are tired of watching. problem in Washington, D.C., and they're going to get a wake-up call this year, too. But the people themselves have now asserted that if the federal government is going to lay down on the job and not be responsive to the will of the people, we will rise up and make our will known through our state legislature, through our governor. 